Okay, so uh, welcome back. So we'll start with uh, Lucy's um, question. How do we encourage present day you know, Roman Catholics to come out of their situations? Okay, so assuming that uh, people who are part of, you know, let's say, Roman Catholic Church, and they are not, you know, they're not safe, right? That is based on that. Um, She's asked that question. So, so the thing is, obviously, uh, lead them back to the uniqueness of Christ. Lead them back to the, the the centrality of God's word. You know, why do we believe what we believe? It's because of our, uh, you know, what is written in the word of God. So that's very important. for Because uh, for a person from that kind of a worldview, they might believe because that is what tradition says. I believe in this because this is what my family always believed in. I was born into this, so I believe, and I don't find anything wrong with it. Or people could say, you know, they could be a very all-inclusive um, worldview, saying, okay, I, I believe in this, someone else believes in that, they can believe in that, so it's all fine. So we need to bring them back to uh, the centrality of God's word. You know, if we believe sincerely, does that make it the truth? Right. Um, so, how do we know truth? Can we go back to the Word of God, which is the truth? Can we go go back to the the words of Jesus, who is the who said who introduced himself as the way, the truth, and the life? Right. So, going back to the Word of God will will really enable that person to see, okay, because they they are very sincere, right? They love Jesus, and um, so. Take them back to the words of Jesus. What did Jesus say? And uh, and then you know, that can be the start of a um, beginning of journey. So uh, I, I know that a lot of people are in the Catholic Church, but they are born again, right? They are born again, spirit filled, moving in the gifts and so on. But they are they stay back in that environment to minister to the others. Uh, it's a difficult thing, right? No, having known the truth, to continue to be in that kind of a you know, environment and uh, to minister to others. So, yeah. So that would be that would be my answer, right? Yeah, very strong people, very strong sense of community, etc. But uh, once they know the truth and their eyes are open to the truth, then they continue to be strong with the conviction that this is the truth. Right? Okay. Okay. So let's move on to chapter seven. Right? Uh, any questions based on what we saw? What we learned in chapter six. Um, so, like I said, you know that book, um, revivals, visitations, and moves of God. Okay, uh, I don't know in what all uh, languages we have it in, but definitely we have it in English, right? You can download the PDF or take permission and take uh, any of these books here. It's there in the bookshelf. Revivals, visitations, and moves of God. So you could, um, yeah, you could read that. Very useful. It's a compilation, uh, which means that it's a compilation putting together of various uh, articles and also studies that have been done about church history. Right? Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? Anything? No. Okay. Right. So let's move on. Okay. Um, chapter seven. Okay, which is the work of the Holy Spirit uh, towards us in. Uh, so the Holy Spirit has moved to, through church history. Um, the Holy Spirit um, sheds light on what is the truth. The Holy Spirit elevates Jesus. So in all this, how how does the Holy Spirit move in the life of a sinner? Okay, if you look at um, John chapter sixteen, when the Lord Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit to his disciples, right? Uh, he said this in verse eight, and when he has come. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Okay? So when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will bring in this. So he talks about three things. He will convict the world of sin. Okay? He will also he will convict the world of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so let's look at the first thing. 
right? We see that he convicts the world of sin. Okay? He brings conviction in the hearts of people about sin. Okay, so the Holy Spirit does that. He, that's his work, right? So he, people hear the truth, and because of the work of the Holy Spirit, if they are open to it, they are, their hearts are convinced, convicted. They, they, they come to this realization, what I'm hearing is the truth. And they come to this realization, the way I'm living is not right. Okay? So he brings conviction about sin. Okay? We are looking at you know, a person who is a sinner, meaning one who has not accepted Christ. Okay? So he brings that conviction to that person. Okay? So... So that which is a, which is amazing, which is wonderful, because sometimes we we think that we are the ones who are supposed to bring conviction into another person's lives. You know, maybe as ministers of God, as people who want who are sharing the gospel evangelism, we think that no, I have to do something to bring conviction into their lives. I have to bring them to a place of making them feel guilty, making them feel you know uh, all shameful about the kind of life that they're living. I need to do that work. But God is saying, no, no, that's not your work. Right? You simply share. You simply share the truth, speak the truth. And I will do the work of convicting. Okay, So the Lord is saying the Holy Spirit, he convicts the world of sin. Okay. Then the second thing is that he convicts the world or brings a conviction about the righteousness of God. Righteousness of Christ. He convicts the world of righteousness, meaning that there is a conviction that this is something right. right. This is wrong and this is right. So he convicts the world of righteousness. Okay, What is right? What is uh, or the nature of God, which is righteousness? Right. Um, so he convicts the world of that, brings conviction uh, about that. The third thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit brings uh, conviction about judgment. Brings conviction about judgment, like right? knowing that bringing uh, to, you know bringing the, this truth that things cannot continue as it were or as it is. There is a holy God, there is a righteous God who will one day judge the world. There is judgment, right? so He brings conviction on our heart about this judgment. He brings conviction that. Humans left to themselves, they are condemned. They cannot save themselves from this, you know, from this God who, who is holy and righteous and who brings judgment, who is the, who will come back as a judge. So he gives that conviction that you know I need to be saved, right? And lastly, we see that the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. It, and this is these are some verses when we look at the Holy Spirit um, and the Lord Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit. He said, this is what the Holy Spirit will do. Right? This is what he will do. John 15 verse 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So the thing is, when we when we look at missions, when we look at evangelism, you know, it is a privilege for us to partner with God. It is a privilege for us to partner with the Holy Spirit. He already has a plan. Yeah, he already you know knows uh, what to do. So we find out and we partner with him. Okay. So that takes a lot of burden off, right? That burden off in the sense a lot of unnecessary pressure or unhealthy pressure off. Where we, where we can come to God and say, Lord, I'm available. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you're doing so that I can partner with you, so that you can move in and through me? So it says that he testifies about Jesus. Right? He testifies. We saw what testifying is. We, know, we see what you know, uh, witnessing is or testifying is. It's talking to someone, saying that this I can vouch for this. Right? I can testify that this is the truth. So the Holy Spirit testifies to a person about Jesus and brings that truth. Yes, Jesus is who he said he is. 
this is truth about Jesus. So he testifies about Jesus. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse 32 says, And we are his witnesses to these things. So also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So, um, so the disciples are saying that we are witnesses to these things. So also is the Holy Spirit, who is also a witness to these things. Right? And then uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, Paul says, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit causes this when he testifies about Jesus. He brings that understanding, revelation, and the conviction that, yes, Jesus is Lord. So no one who has that revelation and understanding and conviction can actually call Jesus accursed. And no one without that understanding can call Jesus as Lord in the true sense. right? Saying that Jesus, you are Lord. Right? So, we, so this is from Paul. right? Paul has that revelation already. When he had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, the first question he asks is, who are you? Lord. Right. So Paul, same Paul, God is using to write, minister to the Corinthians. So Paul writes and he says, no one can call him Lord except by the Spirit of God. So he called him, which means he had the encounter, and by the Spirit of God, he called him Lord. So, so the Holy Spirit causes all this in a, in a person, right? brings about this in a person. So, um, so we, we so that then we, we can say you know we, we sometimes we, we just think that okay god will somehow do it god will take care okay god will do it sovereignly let him i i, I don't need to but the but the thing is invitation is for each one of us as disciples of the lord jesus to partner with what god is doing okay the holy spirit is the one who brings change right conviction of sin conviction of righteousness conviction of judgment he's the one but we have the privilege of partnering with him to be a spokesperson for Jesus. Who's a spokesperson? Who's an ambassador? You know, like who's who's a, when you say a spokesperson? Um, huh? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, who is an ambassador? Like generally speaking. How how does uh, how do you call per, when you call somebody an ambassador or spokesperson? What do they do? Who are they? They represent. Hmm. Okay, so when you call somebody an ambassador, you know, normally in, in political terms. It means that person is actually representing a nation, a country. Okay, so here's the ambassador of India, who's in, let's say, Canada. Okay, so, so what, what nation does he represent? He represents India, and whatever he speaks, he speaks on behalf of India. So whatever you know, so he's the voice of India to that nation. He represents India. He's one person, but he's the ambassador. Right? So he represents. So whatever he speaks, he has to be very careful, right? Because he is actually talking about this nation of India. Whatever he signs, he needs to be careful. He cannot just sign something and say, okay, India will take care of this. No, because he's representing India. So he's the ambassador. Right? So we are called ambassadors for ambassadors of Christ. We are spokesperson for Christ. Okay. So we have the privilege to be spokesperson. We have the privilege to be brand or ambassadors for the sake of the kingdom of God. Okay. And the Holy Spirit, he does the work of transformation. Even as we represent God, even as we represent Christ, even as we speak on his behalf. What do we speak? We speak the truth. We speak the word. We bring the word. But the Holy Spirit takes that and brings it real, makes it real, or convicts people, testifies of Jesus to their hearts. 
right? So that's the beauty of the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, let's move on to the next one, which is the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Um, yeah, representative, that's right, uh, Sanjay. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Okay, so all of us, we've come to follow Christ. Um, so for us to understand that, well, this is how it all began, right? This is how it began. John chapter 3, the Lord Jesus is teaching um, Nicodemus, John chapter 3 and verse 8, uh, sorry, verses 1 uh, onwards. Um, he says about this whole issue of being born again, right? The whole thing of addressing this whole topic of being born again. So the Lord has this conversation with Nicodemus, and Nicodemus is talking about, he's thinking, you know, how can a human being be born again? Like how can he enter into a mother's womb after he's fully grown, etc.? You know, maybe, you know, if you're having a conversation, we'll think like this. Maybe we'll never ask that question, right? But Nicodemus, he blurts it out. He says, how can a man get into a, you know, womb and be born again, right? It seems so foolish. So he, and the Lord answers in verse 5. You know, if you look at John chapter 3 and verse 5, the Lord Jesus saying that, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So he's talking about a spiritual birth. Okay? So water represents natural birth. And, uh, and it could also signify new birth, right? Uh, because water represents the water of the Word of God. Uh, Ephesians 5.26 talks about that. So we see that um, the Lord is saying that this born-again experience is by the Spirit of God, is by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So for the, the journey really starts for the believer with the Holy Spirit. Right, this whole born again experience is by the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Okay, Titus 3. Titus 3, verse 4. Um, but when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Right? He saved us. We were born again through this regeneration or washing of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit actually brought us that new life. Okay. Well, we know that the Word of God also, uh, Word of God also is referred to as the incorruptible seed of God by which we are born again. So it's the Word and the Spirit of God, right? Um, and then Galatians 4, verses 6 and 7. Okay, let's look at Galatians 4, verse 6. Okay, Galatians 4, 6 it says, And because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Okay, the Holy Spirit in our hearts, causing us to cry out, God has sent the Spirit into our hearts to cry out, Abba, Father. And uh, Acts chapter 8 declares it even more plainly. And it says, um, sorry, Romans 8, uh, Romans chapter 8. Okay, it says, um, verse 15, right? It says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Verse 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, the Holy Spirit, by because of the Holy Spirit, we cry out, Abba Father. Okay, so no one really 
you know, taught us or said, you know, you have to do this. You know, you become a child. Now God is your heavenly father. But the Holy Spirit, his work in us caused us to cry out, Abba, Father. Right? So the Holy Spirit gave us the revelation. The Holy Spirit gave us the assurance. Right? Was was 16 says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Okay, so there is an assurance that we receive in our hearts. Okay, what does assurance mean? When we say, "Okay, I'm I'm assured," assurance, huh? Sorry, guarantee. Okay, it's a guarantee. It is a uh, what else? It's a like a promise. Like it's just, I think guarantee is a better word. Like we we feel assured. It means we are confident. Our, uh, you know, our, 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 we are made strong on the inside about this fact that we are children of God. So He gives us the assurance. So we we know on the inside of us that we are somehow children of God. Now I, we may not understand the mechanics of it, not all, but we know. That we are children of God. Nobody has to tell us and force us and brainwash us into saying, you know, you are a child of God, you're a child of God. There is a deep assurance because we have received Christ as Lord and Savior, because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us, testifying, witnessing to our hearts that we are children of God, we have this, this assurance. Okay. And that is brought about by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not have that assurance. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not, you know, it, it, it will not be, this won't be possible. It is, so it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we might have that, do I have the Holy Spirit or not? You know, I'm just living like this. Well, that assurance that you're a child of God, right? Even conviction of sin, that something that you're doing or some, you know, the way you live your life is not right, is because of the Holy Spirit who's resident within. Okay? Okay. So we are born of God, we are given that assurance that we are sons and daughters of God by the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And uh, if, you, if you see, if you, we're going to look at a few things that in everyday life, in ministry, uh, in all these things, how the Holy Spirit works in the life of a believer. Okay. So which means that without the Holy Spirit playing this active role in our lives, we cannot actually function as believers. Okay. So we, we realize that, hey, I need to be, I'm so dependent on the Holy Spirit. You know, we need the Spirit of God. And that is why Jesus said, you know, it's important that I go to the Father, that I will send another helper, that he will be with you forever. John chapter 14, right? He's, that's why he said, okay, I need to send the Holy Spirit so that he can be with you forever. And because we, as believers, we need the Holy Spirit. And just like the Lord also Lord said, right? The Lord said, man shall not live by bread alone. Okay. Man shall not live by natural sustenance, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay. So as important as the word of God is, right? Every rhema that comes from the mouth of God, so also the work of the Holy Spirit, who will lead us back to the Word, right? Okay, let's look at a few things here. Okay, uh, the Bible says that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians one and verse um, twenty-two. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-two. Now, uh, verse twenty-one. Now, He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Okay, So as a guarantee for what? He's given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The, you know, we, what we saw was that He gives us the assurance that we are children of God. Okay, that could be one thing. But we also see that um, if, we, if we turn to, let's say, Ephesians chapter 1, Okay, Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 13 and 14. Okay, Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? So it says, in whom we trusted, after you heard the word of the uh, word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So what does that mean? You were you believed, you put your faith in Christ. And you, something happened to you, you were sealed. You know, there was a mark that was made on or in you by the Holy Spirit. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Okay, a lot, a lot is packed there in that verse, right? It says, who is, again, that word guarantee? Second Corinthians 1 also, we saw the same thing. Who is the guarantee? Okay, so he says he's the guarantee of our inheritance. Okay. In other words, you know, suppose you want to take a bike, buy a bike on uh, let's say EMI, right? What bike do you want to buy? Huh? What bike do you want to buy? What what? Yamaha MTB. Fifth, MT50. Okay. What CZ is it? It's a thousand CZ bike, huh? Okay. Okay. So uh, Moses, right? What's his name? Sorry. Uh, okay. Aman wants to buy a Yamaha MT50 bike. Okay. So he goes to the showroom and says, Okay, I want to buy a bike. Okay. The person says, Fine. We have this easy scheme. Okay. Uh, everything. You just sign these papers. Uh, bank loan, everything is sorted, and uh, you need to make a down payment. Uh, how much is that bike? Sorry? One lakh? Two point? Okay, so two lakh forty nine thousand. Two lakh fifty thousand. Okay, so they say, okay, so 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 the, 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 the okay, sorted, two, two lakh fifty thousand. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the dealer says, okay, now you make a down payment of one lakh, okay? And then monthly installment is how much? Five to seven thousand every month. But you make that you you're not paid that five to seven thousand, right? You're not paid that five thousand. They're saying you make that payment of one lakh. So you made that payment, down payment is done, signed off. Then surprisingly, he's not waiting till you pay those pay off those in, installments. He gives you the key and says, "Sir, you choose. You know, which bike do you want?" The thing gives you the bike. Gives you the bike key, registration, everything done, and Aman is driving back, riding back on an empty. Hopefully, you're wearing a helmet and all that, right? So, yeah, zero to hundred in how many minutes? How many seconds? Eight seconds. Okay. So he's just ripping. Okay, doing going down Kothnur Road. So. So the thing is this, he's got the bike, he was handed the bike, though he did not pay that entire full thing. So the word used there is earnest or guarantee. Okay, The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of the full inheritance. So he's saying the Holy Spirit has come to dwell in you. You're not fully, you know, what is the thing? He's saying you're not guarantee of inheritance until the redemption. Right? The final redemption happens when we, you know, now we are born again in our spirit, then we will have glorified bodies. So until the pert redemption of that pert inheritance, until the redemption, sorry, until the um, uh, redemption of the purchased possession. So who's the earnest? The down payment? The Holy Spirit. So that is what he's saying, you know, the Holy Spirit has come to dwell in you. If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, know, that means that there is something that's going to happen where the redemption is going to be complete. So you have great hope, right? You have the life that you live as a believer is a life of hope, which means that it's not for the just for the here and today and here and now, but there is going to be the completion of redemption in the time to come. Right? And it says here, it's a the guarantee of our inheritance. You know, they, he's the guarantee. He's the down payment. There is an inheritance that is awaiting, and he's the down payment. Right. So, 
the holy spirit is our inherit so we are sealed by the holy spirit he is come and dwells in us as the uh, in as the guarantee right okay so so this is the this is an amazing truth this is a great news right so we have first of all the fact that the holy spirit indwells us itself is is an amazing revelation just think about it right who is the holy spirit holy spirit is god he was there right from creation he was there genesis talks about that he has seen the entire time you know as it turned out the wars the prophets you know he is there is there you know when the when the waters were parted when there was water from the rock he, he was there when the he was there in the early church outpouring of the holy spirit in acts chapter 2 and you know all that he was there the same holy spirit he indwells us right so that's a it's an amazing revelation wow it's not like someone who's a new version version you know version 2023 no the same holy spirit he indwells us okay, so when we turn back when we turn when we turn to god and when we say lord i want to receive from you teach me remind me guide me into all truth he does that you know sometimes we think okay will the holy spirit know this you know will he know some of these things about business about finance about you know about technology does he know of course he knows right he's the one who taught the the, the farmer you know this is how you sow this is how you reap okay. he's the one who taught bezalel this is how you cut these jewels this is the, the craftsmanship and everything he's the one who taught right he's a wisdom so we can actually receive from him he resides in us and many times we don't speak right we don't speak we don't ask or it is uh, it is not in faith so we can we can receive there's so much that we can draw from the presence of god from the presence of the holy spirit and he's with us to help us that's a that's the best thing that he's not there to resist us he's there to help us and that is why he's called the helper lord jesus said he's coming to help you help you to live a sanctified life help you to live an overcoming life right okay let's move on so when we see sanctifying work you know that's to crucify the work of the flesh to live according to the leading of the holy spirit the holy spirit enables us to do that okay um actually you can read through the entire chapters romans chapter 6 7 and 8 um i just want to you know look at chapter 8 okay chapter 8 um and uh, verse so let's look at verses 12 onwards or 13 onwards right It says for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live so many of us have this idea you know i'm not holy enough for the holy spirit to work in me right i must be a little more holy and then the holy spirit will speak to me or work in me right i have to be holy because he holy spirit is holy i have to be a little more holy but look at this verse what does it teach you if you live according to the flesh you will die okay so that means that if you live according to the appetites of the flesh according to the leading of the flesh right what does flesh mean bodily appetites right uh, fleshly appetites unrenewed mind is also referred to as the flesh unrenewed thinking so if you live according to you know whatever you want to do it says it will bring us to a place of death spiritually physically right it will bring us to a place of death but if by the spirit you put to death okay by the spirit who the holy spirit 
by the Holy Spirit, which means that with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the, with the help of His power, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay. So, so which means that we should shift our thinking. Oh, okay. The Holy Spirit has come so that I can put to death the things of the flesh. Put to death meaning bring an end. Right? Bring an end, permanent end to the things of the flesh, to the appetites of the flesh. So the Holy Spirit is going to help me, empower me to put to death, to bring an end to the uh, to that kind of a life, living according to the flesh. So, so Paul is writing and he's saying, if by the Spirit you put to death the things of the flesh, you will live. Okay. So the Holy Spirit, that is why He has come to enable us to live a holy life. Okay. To enable us to live a sanctified life. So I don't have to do in my own strength or with my own things, you know, to try and live a holy life and then come to the Holy Spirit. I can say, Holy Spirit, this is how I am. This is where I am. You know, struggling maybe in certain things, certain areas. You come help me. Help me. I want to put to death the things of the flesh. I want to live. Right? The Holy Spirit is more than willing to do that. In fact, that's that's his ministry. Okay. Romans 1 4 says that perfecting holy, perfecting holiness um, according to the spirit of holiness. I right? declare to be Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So uh, he is he's the spirit of holiness. So it enables us to bring to completion um, or maturity, um, sanctification and holiness in us. Okay. Another scripture, 1, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16. Okay. And we're not going through all the verses listed there. Um, we're just going to go through a few verses, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Okay? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will des destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay? So that is again, the, we are a temple or a habitation, dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Our body, very specifically it says, do you not know, uh, you know one, third, uh, 1 Corinthians 3 says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 6, if you see 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19 and 20, says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, okay, uh, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, which belong to God, okay, which we were bought at a price. We are Christ's possessions, which means we are his property. So he's saying, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which actually don't belong to you, but belong to Jesus, because he has purchased us. right? And we are, your, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So therefore, he comes and to enable us to live a holy life. So we can depend, we can ask. And uh, so this is the thing. Sometimes we say, okay, Holy Spirit, make me holy. Okay, I prayed. I know, I know he will make me, I don't know when he'll make me holy, but, you know, I prayed he'll make me holy. Okay. But Romans 8, verse 13, it says, if by the Spirit, who puts to death? Read that verse again, Romans 8. Romans 8 and verse um, 13, right? Okay, read that verse. If by the Spirit, so I prayed to the Holy Spirit. Okay, He has filled me with power. He is, he is giving me ideas. Uh, who puts to death the deeds of the body? Yeah, I. Okay, who puts to death? It's you, right? You have a, you, you and I. You know, we have to personally do something. The Holy Spirit will enable us. The Holy Spirit will give us that desire. The Holy Spirit will empower us. Right? 
but I have to make a decision. I have to make a choice. And I have to, sometimes it's a series of decisions being led by the Spirit. Right? So by the Spirit, I need to do something. I need to put to death the deeds of the body. It's very important. Right? Because we think, okay, Holy Spirit is in us. Holy, I prayed to the Holy Spirit. Nothing is working. I've been praying for years for things to change. It's not working. Things are not changing. Right? We become very frustrated. Holy Spirit, where are you? God, where are you? Right? I've been praying, I've been asking, and nothing is changing in my life. No transformation. So here, it's saying, if by the Spirit you put to death, if the Holy Spirit will give you ideas, you have to say yes. The Holy Spirit will probably you know, say, hey, don't do that. I have to say, okay, fine, I will not. Depends on my response. But the Holy Spirit will empower us, empower us right, to say yes. He will empower us. He will give us the... Uh, sometimes we don't, emotionally, we don't feel like it. We don't feel like saying yes to the Holy Spirit. Right? We feel like saying no to the Holy Spirit. Or when the Holy Spirit says, okay, you need to say no to this, we feel like saying yes, opposite of what the Holy Spirit is leading. Right? Emotionally, we may not feel it. But if by faith, you know, we see that Holy Spirit is with me, Holy Spirit is strengthening me, therefore, I will make a choice. I will make that choice. That choice can be so very powerful. Very powerful. That, you know, for example, if you, if you see the study, uh, if you, we learn about the parable of the... Uh, of the prodigal son, right? He went, he wasted all the money. He was eating that. He was, he was considering, yeah, I said, maybe I should eat this pig's food. Then he came to himself. He made a choice. He made a decision. What did he say? I'm going back. I'm going back to my father's house. He made a decision. He made a choice. And that choice changed his life. Right? So the Holy Spirit will give us conviction. The Holy Spirit will give us the also the ability, but we need to make that choice. And when we make that choice, and when we make that decision, follow through, it will be life changing, right? It will there'll be transformation. Okay, so that's what we see here. If by the Spirit you put to death, you will live. If you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. It's it's as different or it's as drastic as death. And life, because you will actually live, right? Okay, what else? When we walk in the Spirit, or when we walk as led by the Spirit of God, um, you know, we we can walk in love. Okay, um, just want us to look at Galatians five. Okay, Galatians chapter five. Okay, Galatians 5 and verse 16. Okay, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, verse 17, he says, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary or opposite to each other, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So he uses certain words like walk in the Spirit, led by the Spirit. Okay, so what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? Any idea? Walk in the Spirit. Because it's a very important thing. He says, if you walk in the Spirit, then you shall not... Look at that verse. What did it say? Verse 16. Galatians 5, verse 16. Ah. Uh, Yeah, so it, it's it's an end to all frustration. It's an end to you know living a very defeated life, which is walking in the spirit according to the Holy Spirit. So, so it's an important thing we need to understand. What is this walking in the spirit? Okay. So this walking is to be led by, to be taught by, and in living in obedience to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. 
So he's saying you walk in this way. When you walk or live your life, okay, the Bible uses words like walk, run, referring to the way we conduct our lives, right? Like another verse that we see in Hebrews, right? Say, run with endurance, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and perfecter of our faith. Run. What does it mean? It means that the way you live your life, you know, when you're the way you conduct your life, do it with endurance. You need stamina. Same way, it says, walk in the Spirit. So walk according to being led by the Spirit, being prompted by the Spirit, being in obedience to the Spirit of God. So when we do that, there's a guarantee, there's an assurance. He's saying that, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says these two are opposite. They're pulling in opposite directions. Right? One is an appetite of the body to, and craving to fulfill in ungodly ways. The other one is leading to life. Right? So you do that and you will um, not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's go down to verse 25, same chapter, Galatians 5, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, so he's saying your entire life, you, you, know, you live, you walk, you do everything as led by the Spirit of God. So it's very important for us to learn how can I be led by the Spirit of God? Because it's, it's the key to not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. It's a key to a victorious life, right? To be led by the Spirit of God. So for every believer, we need to understand, okay, I need to live my life as ordered, as prompted, as led by the Holy Spirit. That's going to lead me into life, right? Into freedom, okay? So walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, okay? Then we look at Romans chapter 5, and verse 5, Romans 5 and verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay. Now why are we looking at these verses? We are looking at how the Holy Spirit enables or helps the life of a believer. Okay. One who has put the trust in Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit is, say, uh, so we saw that, okay, a life of holiness, sanctification, everything happens. Now, this is also something, as we walk, as led by the Spirit of God, says here, hope must not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What has been poured out into our hearts? The love of God. What is that love of God? What does that mean? The love of God. Something has been put to us, something has been given to us, poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's already been done, right? So we need to know, hey, what, is, what do I have? Yeah, what has the Holy Spirit done to me? We need to understand. Only then I'll be able to really enjoy it, walk in it, yeah? Sometimes if I'm ignorant of it, I won't even know. Right? So it's like one day you opening a bag or a box and saying, oh, I didn't know this was here. All these years I had it. If I had known, I would have used it. Right? The love of God. The word used there is agape. Okay? So the love of God, the love that God has. When you say, you know, this is, uh, this is my phone or this is my watch, it belongs to me. Right? So a similar way, saying the love of God, the love that belongs to God, that love that comes from Him has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the love of God is already there. Then what's the problem? Right? The problem is when I open my mouth, I'm shouting at this guy. And I, you know, when I think these thoughts, I'm thinking thoughts of revenge. There's something, right? There's something that is not happening right. If I have the love of God, if I have the Holy Spirit, just think about it. You're, you're walking, talking, you know, people who are carrying the presence of God. Something needs to go out, right? Something needs to, in our, in our expression, in our behavior, something needs to change. Okay, so we'll look at that okay, in the coming class. Okay.
will stop here. Thank you.